Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be looking at a technique for creating camera projection or rather a simulation of that effect. So here's how it looks. Now, as I say, this is a cheat, but in actual fact, it works extremely well, and I think you'll be quite pleased with the results. So let's have a look how it all works. I've got a new project here. It's, as usual, 1920-1080. It's 24 frames a second, and it's 10 seconds long. And I'm going to come to my file browser, and I've made a sample image that uh, you can use to follow along this with this tutorial. And I'll put a link to that in the comments so let's bring that into our project to get started. The first thing we're going to do is to make a clone of this layer. So we're going to right click and make clone layer. And then we're going to drag that out into a new group. I just want to call this base layer reference and I want to lock it. Then I want to add a camera. So that's object new camera and switch to 3D. But because we've locked that reference group, it doesn't change and that's what we need. So the next thing I'm going to do is come over to the library and I'll look for generators and we will select grid and we'll bring it into that second group that we've made, the 3D one, and we'll stick it above the clone layer. And then we'll click on the inspector tab here. We'll set the background opacity down to zero the background width will set to 100 and the height to 75. And let's just set the line width to 1 so it's a little bit less obtrusive. So the next thing we want to do is to concentrate on building the left-hand side of our alleyway. So I'm going to call this group left. And first of all, I want to select both the clone layer and the grid and come to their properties. And I want to open up the crop. And what I want to do is I want to crop it so that we are only getting this wall up to the point at which it ends. So that's around about here. So I'm going to select the right hand crop and I'm going to drag it upwards till we get to something like 1032, 1030, 1032. So that's both of those cropped. Let's just turn off the reference so you can see what I mean. So there we go. Then what I want to do is I want to select this group and I want to adjust its anchor point. Now the anchor point currently is in the center of the frame. and I want to make it on the extreme left hand edge. So don't forget my project is 1080. So what I'm going to do is move the anchor point to minus 960 on X. And then I also need to move the X position to minus 960. So now if we view the overlays, you can see my anchor point sitting there at the extreme left hand side of the screen. So what we're going to do now is twirl open the rotation for that group. And what we want to do is we want to angle it backwards. So that's an angle of 90 degrees on Y. So this is where we do our clever fake camera projection. I'm going to take my X scale for the group and I'm going to increase it until I get to the edge of that wall, just round about there. Let's try 3240. I happen to know that that works. And there's one other thing I've forgotten to do, which is to come to the group here and I want to switch it to flatten. And I also want to come to the camera and adjust its far plane. Because you see that despite the fact that we've extended that group all the way to the end, the camera is not seeing it that far back. So that's because the far plane of the camera here is set to 10,000. So I'm going to set it to something huge like 100,000. And then you can see that extends all the way back to that edge. Okay, now we've flattened this group uh, what we can do is we can use the four corner controls down here. So let's select that and open up the controls. Let's hide the transform so that gives us a bit more space. What I want to do is I want to adjust this corner and this corner. 
So that's the top right and the bottom right. So first of all, let me adjust the top right. And what I'm gonna do is I want to square up my grid. And that's why I've put the grid in. So I've, you'll see that, that grid is now reaching the top of the frame. And I'm going to do the opposite with the bottom right. So that's bring it down with a negative value. And as you see, as I scroll in that field there, we've now squared up our grid. We might need to just slightly adjust the top as well. It's not exactly critical, but the closer you can get it, the more it's going to match the reference. And now you can see the value of having that grid in there. If I turn the grid off, you can see that my new layer is exactly in line, almost exactly in line with the reference. And we've done that by lining up that grid to effectively cancel out the perspective. Because we've been doing it to the group that contains the, the left-hand wall and the grid, we've affected the, the wall as well. So now we've got that set up, we can create our right-hand wall. So let's duplicate this left-hand one by right-clicking Duplicate, and let's call it Right. And let's turn off the left-hand wall for the time being. So, okay, let's look at the properties for this group. Let's reset that four corner transform for the time being. And let's open back up the transform here. We want to set the anchor point to the right hand edge of the screen this time. So let's set an X position of 960 and we'll set the X anchor point to 960. And the other thing we need to do is we need to come inside the group, select the grid and the clone, and we need to cancel out the crop there. And we're going to do the opposite crop. So we're going to crop the left-hand sides to 1032. So now we need to flip the rotation around the other way. So that's minus 90 on Y. And you can see we've now got our anchor point on the left there. We're stretching back into Z space. And we need to do the same trick of adjusting our four corner transform. So let's hide the transform there. This time we want to be affecting the bottom left and the top left. So I'm going to start with the top left, Y. And again, I just want to be looking to square up my grid so there we go. And what did I say? I said bottom left. So we need to come down on the bottom left. Again, I want to square up my grid like so, cancelling out the perspective. And if we turn off the grid and we turn off the reference, you can see that my wall on the right hand side is now lining up as well. Uh, let's turn off the grid in the left hand side. Let's come to the camera. And just in case you don't believe me, let's open the camera transform there. Let's open up the position. And you can see that if I zoom in now, or rather if I track in with the camera, we've actually got the beginnings of our camera projection. What we need to do though is we need to create a floor and we need the background image at the back. So let's just make sure our camera is back at the zero position on X, Y, and Z, no rotation or anything. And what we want to do is make another duplicate. So let's duplicate that right hand group. So right click duplicate and let's call this floor. So let's turn off the right and left so we can see what we're doing. Let's turn the grid back on for this group. Now in this case, we want to adjust the anchor point so it's hanging off the bottom edge of the screen. So let's just cancel out everything on the transform there and let's reset our four corner. And we'll also come in to our grid and our clone layer and just reset that crop for the time being. So reset, grid, reset, clone. And in this case, we want to crop it down just to the bottom of those two walls right at the back there. 
So I'm going to select the grid and the clone layer. Let's hide the transform so we can see, have a bit more space. So we want to crop the top. So let's see how we're doing there. So let's come down there. I can zoom in a little bit just to check how we're doing. We can come down a little bit further, probably to around, say, 574. Zoom back out again. And then we want to set the anchor point for the group, which is up here in the middle, down to the bottom. So let's select the group. Let's open the transform back up again. I want to move it down to minus 540 on Y and set the Y anchor point to minus 540. You notice this is a two step process. So you need to move the anchor point and move the position. You could do it manually, but then you, it's hard to get the exact numbers. So much better to type them in. OK, so now what we want to do is we want to roll this backwards. So let's set a negative X rotation of minus 90. And then you've probably guessed that what we need to do is again to square up the grid. But first of all, let's turn back on our reference and we want to scale it so it's reaching back to the bottom of that wall again. We want to scale it on Y in this instance. So stretch it out. I happen to know that the correct value here is 5655 on Y. And again, what we need to do, as I say, is to square out the grid. So let's hide the transform so we can get access to the four corner. OK, we want to affect the top left and the top right. So let's start with the top left and we need to move it this time on X rather than Y. So again, we're looking to square up the grid. So I'm dragging that value. It's quite a long way this time. And let's do the same thing with the top right on X. Move that across. So we're squaring up the grid, something like that. So now if I turn off my grid, you'll see that my floor is lining up pretty well with the reference. And I can turn on my right hand and left hand walls, turn off the reference and open up the camera transform. And you can see that floor is now working really nicely as well. And we can track up and down. You see, obviously, if we come outside the extents of our image, we're seeing some pretty odd stuff, but we needn't really worry about that. All you need to remember is to track the camera in sufficiently that you can start playing around and not run off the edges of your image. OK, so let's reset the camera position by hitting the reset button here on its transform. And let's put in our background. And to do that, I'm going to take my original image in the reference group, right click, make clone. And I'm going to drag that out into a new group. And I'll call this group background. And I just want to move that down just above the reference group. So you can see that that's now sitting in the back there. But so we can get some really nice parallax, we want to move that a really long way back. So I'm going to select the group and I'm going to come to the Z position and I'm going to enter a value of minus 50,000 pixels. And you'll see it's now absolutely tiny, but we can fix that by increasing the scale. So I'm going to crank up the scale till we fill the screen again. Right, so that's pretty nice. Now if I move my camera, uh, for example, left and right, you can see that I'm getting some really nice parallax with that distant background. Now let's add some lights. So I'm going to come to Object, New Light. And this for me is the fun part because it all suddenly starts to really make a lot of sense. So that's really all of a sudden pretty dramatic, the difference between that and that. Um, it's only lighting up the front part of our scene at the moment. But what we want to do is have a string of lights running back towards the back of the scene. So let's duplicate this light. So right click duplicate, come to properties and let's set this value to 
minus 5,000. That's the Z value to move it back. You can see how nice this looks with these lights starting to illuminate further back into the scene, but leaving these areas of shadow between. So let's duplicate that light again. Right click duplicate and come to the properties. And again, let's move it back by 5,000 pixels. So that's minus 10,000 pixels. All looking very nice. Right click again, duplicate properties minus 15,000. And let's go again. Right click, duplicate properties minus 20,000. And I think we can probably do one more. Right click, duplicate properties minus 25,000. Let's duplicate this one more time. And this light is going to be the light for our extreme background layer. So right click, duplicate, properties. And this one we want to set to minus 48,000. And I want to set the Y position to 5,000. Let's come to the light controls. And I just want to reduce the fall off to 1%. And that's now giving me enough illumination to see our background, but it looks like late at night, evening, whatever we want to call it. Now the problem about this is that we've got some lights in this building here, this industrial tower. We want this layer to be affected by the light because it looks quite nice like when we do that, but we want those lights to be nice and bright. So there's a trick I want to show you uh, about how we could composite that to make a, a better effect. So I'm going to come out down to that background group, come to the clone layer inside it, right click, duplicate, and then I'm going to come to the library and I'm going to look for filters. I'll come to the color correction section and I'm going to grab threshold and add it to that second layer that I just created. If I come over to the inspector, properties, let's set its blend mode to add. And I know if I turn that on and off, you can see how that's adding illumination to those lights in the background there. What I might also do is open up the lighting tab here and turn off the shading, lighting shading off. And that's really punching them through. Let's come back to that filter and adjust it a bit. I'm going to set the light color here to be a sort of orangey, really orangey kind of thing. Don't worry about that cloud because I'm going to sort that out in just one second. So somewhere up there, nice and intense. And we, what we want to do is just crop off anything that's outside our tower. So I'm going to select the crop here, turn on the overlay, and I'm just going to crop it down so we don't see that. Just need the absolute minimum. We could crop in our sides, not really necessary. There we go. So turn off the overlays and you can see how that really kicks those lights through makes a really nice result there. So that's quite a useful trick to know using the threshold. Effectively, to, that creates a, a luma key, but um, it's, it's quite a quick way of doing it. And we've been able to colorize it as well at the same time. OK, so I'm jumping around a bit here, but let's now set up an animation for our camera. So let's select the camera. Let's come to the library, come to behaviors basic motion and let's add a throw to the camera and we'll come to the inspector. Let's open up the throw velocity here and I'd like to enter a Z value of minus 300, sorry, minus 300 and a Y value of 50. So that's going to rise us up as we go back into the scene. So here we go, this is a preview. It's looking quite nice. Right, uh, again, as I say, I'm skipping around all over the place. What I want to do is add a little bit of animation to one of these lights. So I'm going to select this third light up here, that one there, come to the light tab, select the intensity, click on this triangle at the right hand edge, add parameter behavior, randomize. 
what I want to do is set the amount to 50% and the apply mode to subtract. Let's increase the frequency to 20 and the noisiness to 0.75. And now if I play that, you can see that light is flickering and that's quite an interesting effect. Just adds some more life to the scene. Okay, so another thing I'd like to do is have my lights kick on sequentially. So I'll have my first light on from the very beginning, but then I'm going to come to one second on the timeline. Type that value down in the time code window there. I'm going to select the second light up and I'm going to hit I. I'm going to come to two seconds on the timeline. Select the next light up, which is our flickering light. And again, hit I on the keyboard. Let's have a look how that works. Just those two. So one, two. It's quite a nice effect. So we can carry on doing that. We'll come to three, select the next light up, hit I, come to four seconds, next light up, hit I, and five seconds, next light up, hit I. That final light is our light in the distance. So let's call that light distant and we'll leave that on throughout. And let's come back to the beginning and see how that works. So with some nice sound design, that's going to be really quite cool. You have this, that classic light turning on sound that only exists in movies, but it's always very effective. Okay, so what's really going to bring this to life, I think, is some particle action. The first thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of a flame to the top of this building, like it's burning off oil or something. So let's make a new group right at the top. So object new group. And I'll call this group effects. And I'm going to come to the library. I want to look for particle emitters and I'll come to pyro. And I want to look for the one that's called fire plume and I'll bring that into my effects group. I want to come to the inspector properties and I want to set its blend mode to lighten. And then I want to adjust its position. So minus 740, uh, 7160 on Y and minus 49,000 on Z. And then we need to scale it up a lot so we want to go for 324. Oh, that's not right, is it? I've obviously got an incorrect value somewhere or other here. Never mind, I shall just bring it down on Y, move it across on X, like so. Possibly scale it up just a little bit more. Right, I want to turn off the smoke component there. And I also want to turn off the oscillate. And I want to come down to the lighting and always with flame and lights and anything like that, uh, you want to turn off the lighting. So that looks quite good. Uh, we don't want that initial flare up phase, or at least I don't. So I'm going to select the fire plume on the mini timeline. It's fully on by two seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that back two seconds. So minus two seconds there come to the end of the timeline, hit O to extend it back out again. And you'll see that's now flaring away from the top of that building and looking quite nice. Next, what we want to do is to add some fog, I think. So let's come to the library. Again, we are in our particle emitters section. Let's come to nature. And I want to look for fog the floor and I'll drag that into my effects group as well. Let's come over to the inspector properties. I need to select fog the floor. Let's just reset all of that so it's in the center. I just want to set the opacity down to 5% so it's really quite subtle. And I want to set the Y position to minus 200. Let's now come to the emitter controls here. And at the moment it's a 2D effect, so, but, so I want to switch it to 3D. And I also want to come to the shape, once I've selected 3D, gives me the option of selecting box. And that brings up a whole separate set of controls. 
Let's adjust the size by twirling open the size controls there. Let's have a width of 960, a height of 150, so it's not too high, and a depth of 1500. And you'll see now that that's a really nice foreground effect. really helps to add the feeling that we're moving through this scene in 3D. OK, let's add some background fog as well. OK, let's come back to the library. Still in particle emitters, still in nature, let's look for the thing simply called fog. And again, drag that into the effects group. Let's select it, come to the inspector, properties. Let's reset all these values by hitting the transform reset button and set a Z position of minus 5000. And I want to increase the scale to 500%. Now I want to come back to the emitter. Again, we want to switch it to 3D. Again, we want to switch it to box. And we can probably live with that 300 by 300 arrangement. Let's come back to the properties and again, let's reduce that opacity right down to 5%. So if I toggle that on and off, you see we've got this nice atmosphere stretching into the back of our scene, as well as that swirling fog right in the foreground. So that's looking good. I also want a little bit of a plume of smoke that's like coming out of a, a vent here down on the left hand side. So again, I'm going to come back to the library. I'm going to come to the smoke category and there's something called smooth smoke left. So let's bring that in to that group there. Now I want to make sure it's below the fog and fog the floor. So I'm going to come to object, send to back, and that'll put it at the back of this group. Let's come to the inspector, let's come to the properties, I want to set a, an X position of minus 920, a Y position of minus 520, and a Z position of minus 5120. And you can see we've got that coming out of the gutter down here, just adds that is a little bit extra interest to the scene. Again, maybe we don't want it appearing, so let's come to about three seconds. Yes, that's fully on at three seconds. So let's on the mini timeline, let's just drag that back three seconds, watching for that mini timeline display, minus three. Come to the end of the timeline, hit O to extend it back out again. So in my demo, I had a rather flashy effect of the scene exploding at the end. But that's outside the scope of this tutorial because those elements were derived from Video Copilot's great Action Essentials collection. And really, if you want to do anything of that nature, I really recommend you check that out. So I hope you're not too disappointed in not seeing that. And I hope there's been enough of interest in this tutorial to at least show you about how to cheat camera projection for a pretty interesting result. Camera projection is used very widely in the visual effects world for creating quasi 3D environments and it's a, it's a really effective tool. So I hope you find a use for it in your own projects. Thanks very much indeed for watching and I hope to see you again on the next one.